Okay, this is a very specific and extremely accurate real-world test with very precise controls, I can assure you. It, the controls on these, on the, this testing were actually painful. Um, measuring things out, make, suring, make sure that the light is exactly the same. Here we have the dynamic range differences between the Fuji X-T1 and the X-T2 using the exact same lens, exact same lighting condition and a precision a color checker passport a color calibration and dynamic range testing tool and also using uh, the Siconic software this was also using the best light meter that money can buy the L758DR Siconic uh, Digital Master here you can see on the X-T1 well we have um, the same and this is exactly what I expected to be negative 2.8 EV on uh, the, uh, the clipping point on uh, the shadows and the dynamic range of 3.2 versus 3.2 between the X-T1 and X-T2 that was to be certainly expected however we do have nearly half a stop more of dynamic range but very specifically and this is the one if you want to call it a weak point like on the Nikon D500 the Nikon D500 uh, clips specular highlights a bit too easy and one thing that's really important is not clipping your speculars and really really good news in the Fuji X-T2 is that we have a 3.2 EV and this is conservative clipping point using the exact same parameters compared to the Fuji X-T1 of a 2.8 EV so we basically have definitely a uh, we have a half a stop better on our specular clipping points on the X-T2 uh, versus the X-T1. The dynamic range nearly half a stop better on the Fuji X-T2 and uh, the most important thing to be sure is that we have much better specular clipping points on the Fuji X-T2 than we do the X-T1. Um, the, uh, also the range between uh, the exact same parameters uh, as set for complete uh, total dynamic range between the Fuji X-T1 and X-T2, the total clipping point dynamic range that we have is basically a half a stop better and that's really good. Um, considering we're working with the exact same um, APS-C crop sensor but now we're working with a 24 megapixel sensor instead of a 16 and uh, it could be improvements in uh, either um, uh, the AD converters or the SNR firmware or uh, could be better micro lens design actually over top of the photo sites themselves. We have a better clipping point range by nearly half a stop on the Fuji X-T2 over that of the X-T1. So this is actually better than I expected it to be. I actually I thought I knew the shadows would remain the same but the clipping point on our speculars our highlights uh, is basically a half a stop better and so that is good news for those of you that are worried about pushing the boundaries and uh, like I said I went to some really painful means um, to actually make all of these things absolutely perfect with zero margin for error I mean this was you thought well I just took a few pictures no I that's not what I had to do I had to do three stops over, three stops under, and had to make sure that my uh, my uh, clipping points and where the parameters I had set relative uh, to the uh, XT1 were exactly the same, and they certainly were, and so that's good news. So thanks for watching, and uh, that is the dynamic range real world testing of the uh, Fuji XT1 versus the Fuji XT2. Okay. Thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for uh, checking out the other videos. I'll be rolling out a lot more videos in the X-T2. Okay, bye.